The day after the Belgian Grand Prix, the first news article about AIDS appeared on page 7 of the New York Native, a gay bi-weekly newspaper, under the heading Disease Rumours Largely Unfounded, two weeks before it was officially announced in the CDC's Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. Thanks to the massive box office failure of 1980's Heaven's Gate, United Artists was acquired by MGM to form one of the biggest Hollywood studios to date. On Memorial Day, the 25th of May, acrobat Dan Goodwin climbed the Sears Tower in Chicago, the tallest building in the world at the time, dressed as Spider-Man using suction cups. At the 65th of the 110 floors, the police intercepted him, but agreed to allow him to reach the top before arresting him. Spider-Dan said his stunt was to draw attention to inadequacies in high-rise emergency services, having witnessed a terrible fire at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas the previous year. His continued climbing buildings and setting records most recently in Chile in 2014. A Prowler jet crashed on the landing on the deck of the USS Nimitz, killing 14 and injuring 48. Investigation would later reveal that the pilot was on double the recommended amount of stimulants, while many of the deck crew tested positive for marijuana. The US Navy would institute a zero-tolerance policy to drugs and be the first Navy to regularly drug test its sailors. President Reagan, still convalescing from his attempted assassination, became the oldest US president to hold office, beating Eisenhower's record of 70 years and 108 days. His record would stand until the inauguration of Donald Trump at 70 years and 220 days. Meanwhile, in the F1 world, the teams in sombre mood after the tragic farce at Zolder arrived in Monaco. Most would have rather been elsewhere, but the sponsors love Monaco, so the teams and drivers have to put up with it. The ATS team had reverted to one car, but had fired the disappointing Lammers in favour of Slim Borgood. Lotus, meanwhile, debuted their new car, the Lotus 87, designed and built in record time after the Lotus 88 debacle. FISA had, at least, come up with a better solution to pit lane overcrowding, a particular issue in Monaco, even with only 20 grid slots available for the race itself. A Thursday morning pre-qualification session would whittle the bottom nine cars down to four for practice and qualification proper. The Tolman, March, ATS, Ozella, Ensign and Theodore teams all turned out early and it was the latter three whose cars went through, with Borgood, Daly, Salazar, Warwick and Henton all taking a very early bath. Qualifying itself saw PK on pole once again with Villeneuve alongside and the new Lotus seemed like a strong contender right out of the box with Mansell a career best third and De Angelis sixth. The Williamses were a disappointed fourth, Carlos, and seventh, Allen, with Patrese continuing Arrows' strong start to the season in fifth. Down at the blunt end, Pironi could have only manage 17th in the other Ferrari with Mark Sierra and Michele Alboreto taking the last two grid slots. Hector Rebacke missed the cut nearly 3.5 seconds off his teammates' pole time and would join Rosberg, Jabouy, Serra and the Azella boys in getting Sunday off. Monaco often throws up surprises, but they're usually on the track. However, the 1981 race was delayed by over an hour after a fire in the kitchen of the Lowe's Hotel, directly above the famous tunnel section of the track. Once extinguished and the area cleared of emergency vehicles, there was now a big wet patch at the entrance to the tunnel. Would that play a part in the race? When the lights finally went green, the usual scramble through the saint de produced the usual coming together. This time, Andrea de Cesaris and Mario Andretti were the two that ended up in the wall, while Piquet took the lead chased by Villeneuve, Mansell and the two Williamses. Mansell's promise was cut short when a suspension problem put him out on lap 16, and Patrese's gearbox gave up after 29 laps, prompting a flurry of retirements. De Angelis' engine on lap 32, Arnoux hitting a wall on the same lap, and then two laps later, Reutemann's gearbox failed, forcing the Argentinian driver to retire, breaking his impressive point-scoring streak of 14 races in a row. Jones, meanwhile, had managed to get past Villeneuve when pressuring Piquet when the Brazilian slid into a barrier in traffic. With 23 laps to go, Jones motored into the lead and stayed there until he was forced to pit with a fuel problem on lap 67, just nine laps from the flag. He rejoined in the lead, but Villeneuve was on a charge now and took the lead on lap 72, holding off the Williams for the last four laps to win his and Ferrari's first race since 1979. Jones finished second, ahead of Lafitte's Talbot Ligier, Pironi's Ferrari, Chivas Tyrrell and Mark Sierra's Ensign. Patrick Tombe had the dubious distinction of being the only one of the seven classified finishers not to score a point.